Hello and welcome. My name is Shauna Brown, and I will be the host for this TLC session, Equity and Allies. We are excited that you have joined us today. Please welcome our presenters, Jackie and Poppy. Hi, y'all. Um, I'm so excited to um, first introduce my, um, my co-presenter, Jackie Furtado, Associate Vice President of Strategy Management and Engagement for Ashford University. Jackie's had the pleasure of providing cross-departmental leadership and support for educational institutions for over 13 years. And how many years with us, Jackie? Six. Six years. Oh, Throughout Jackie's career, she's held leadership roles within academic affairs, institutional effectiveness, and student affairs. Jackie currently oversees career and alumni services, military and academic outreach, strategy planning and management, and this allows her to create and implement integrated strategy development and management solutions. In service to her community, Jackie serves on the board of San Diego Regional Economic Development Foundation and the Board of Governors for Thrive Public School. And uh, she is, uh, she, pardon me, she holds a Bachelor of Arts in Marketing Communication and a Master of Arts in Educational Le Leadership. Welcome, Jackie. Thanks, Poppy. It's the Jackie and Poppy Show. I know. Now it's my turn to introduce Poppy. What's happening? <laughs> there we are. Fix that little technical glitch. We're working so, it out, folks. So let me take this pleasure to mm -hmm. formally introduce Dr. Poppy Fitch. Dr. Poppy Fitch is a higher education administrator and counselor whose career spans more than 25 years working in San Diego Area Community College and University settings. She currently serves as the Associate Vice President of Student Affairs, 504 ADA, and Title IX Coordinator at Ashford University. Poppy previously served at Grossmont and QMAC Colleges supporting students with disabilities. Poppy earned her doctor in post-secondary community college educational leadership and her master's in education with a specialization in multicultural counseling, both from San Diego State University. Her research focuses on the success factors for foster youth who have persisted to college degree completion. In service to the community, Poppy serves on the Women's March San Diego Board, San Diego State University Alumni Association, and is appointed to the San Diego Community Review Board on, policy, on police practices. We are both co-chairs. We share that seat of the Ashford Equity Council. Thanks so much, Jackie. She needs to scooch over. Guess what, folks? The slide won't advance. Naturally. Okay, we're so excited to be here today um, to talk with you all about the topic of the intersection of uh, allyship and our work as equity-minded educators. Jackie and I believe that to embrace equity and equity-mindedness, we must become better allies. And so before we begin our conversation about um, the intersection of allyship and equity work, we just wanted to remind everybody of our formal role uh, as co-chairs of the Ashford University Equity Council and to bring to your attention the mission and vision of the council. Um, and then we'll, we'll get going on our, on our um, presentation today. So to begin, we wanted to ask the group on the line to let us know um, what does it mean to you to be an ally? So Sean is gonna be minding uh, our chat for us. What do we see? It's quiet. We sprung that on you. To be a friend. Thank you, Kingsley. To be a friend. Oh, here, here we go. go. Bam. Christina says to be supportive. Uh, oh, it's happening so fast. It can't keep up. Here we go. <laughs> to lift up others around you. Support and empathy from Kim. Mm -hmm. Eric. Eric says to be supportive. Oh, Nikki, ding, ding, to fight for causes other than your own. Rebecca says to have someone's back to be supportive. Shh, to 
be a partner, ambassador, and advocate. These are great. Absolutely. You all don't need us. So over. <laughs> okay. So um, this was an interesting uh, question because, as you might imagine, there are a lot of definitions, as your chat in um, demonstrated, there are a lot of definitions of allyship. So uh, Jackie and I took um, what we saw as less a definition and more an expression of behaviors of allyship from author Roxanne Gay and her, this is from her um, article on making Black Lives Matter. Um, in this case, she talks about um, the context of this article is really about black folks, but, um, but she notes uh, in this, in this uh, passage that um, oppression can take um, or it can exist across race and ethnicity, gender, sexuality, ability, class, religion, a number of markers of identity. And she talks about, um, as many of you did, taking on the forms of oppression as your own. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna press pause in the presentation on the topic of allyship and we're gonna switch over to equity and we promise that we'll come back to allyship later in the presentation. So we're gonna need you in another chat. It keeps happening. I'm on mute and then I'm unmuted. My <laughs> computer has a mind of its own. So we asked you what an ally meant to you. Now we're gonna flip it back to what does educational equity mean to you? Equity is a hot topic across all sectors of post-sector. We wanna know how you define educational equity and then share that definition with us in the chat. I'll hit go. Ooh, Kingsley, Kingsley. wow, you're on fire. Educational equity to me is about each of us getting what we need to survive or succeed. It's access to opportunity, networks, resources, and supports that are based on where the individual is and where they want to go. Well said, Kingsley. Thank you so much. Again, I'm not sure. Do we keep going? <laughs> this group's got it. Fairness and opportunities. What Kingsley said. Christina, yeah, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> But in addition, say fairness and education. Thank you, Christina. All right. Okay, so I think that was about it with the chat. So we'll go through some, mm. oh, do we have a couple? Not equivalent or the same, but fair. Um, I heard, saw to meet the needs of learners so that he or she can take advantage of the opportunity to learn being open to new definitions and the understanding of fairness. Like the openness about definitions, great point. Okay, I don't wanna cut it off. Great feedback, thank you for everybody for contributing. So what is equity? So I just wanted to share a, a small definition and this is from the Association of American Colleges and Universities, the AACNU. Equity is, the, is about the quality of being fair. So we saw a lot about that in the chat and helping to ensure that each person gets what they need. Again, we saw that in the chat about that personalized care and attention. So the AACNU definition is to effectively educate today's students' higher education. We, most we have to focus both on quality and equity and to make the most empowering forms of college learning available to all students. Can so, I just ch chime in, Jackie, absolutely. that um, Johnny said, Acknowledging that gaps may exist among different groups. I just want to lift that one up. Absolutely. It might come up later, Johnny. It's going to come up very soon. Okay. I wanted to share a little bit. So uh, we talk about our equity and we also talk about equality and understanding the difference between the two. So this illustration is provided by the Center for Urban Education. Can you refer to that as Q? So in our, in our acronyms later on in this presentation, as you can see in this visual, um, this. Q breaks it down, kind of the deeply ingrained ideas about the concept of equality and the problems with it. Um, introducing diversity in the mix and explaining how and what it means to embrace equity over equality. So you can see with this visualization, you see three individuals starting at the same place. So that's the assumption. When we think about equality, we assume or presume that everyone is starting at the same place. 
but we know the world isn't equal. Um, and we know that some uh, students start with greater um, advantages. And some of those are outlined here, active social networks and social capital, um, perhaps honors courses, AP credit, and more highly skilled teachers. Um, oftentimes students um, in this bucket are middle to upper class. They have access to test prep, uh, tutors, educated parents, scholarships, et cetera. And then on the right hand side of the slide, we know that there are some students who begin um, with a variety of disadvantages, such as poorly funded schools, less skilled teachers, um, high counselor ratios, um, and truncated curriculum. And then I would also add to this slide that um, frequently these are students who have not had anyone encourage them with respect to college going uh, um, aspirations. And so this begins to um, write a story for students about um, their, uh, the potential for college readiness and college uh, aspirations for them. Guess what? This is my slide as well. And the world has bias and systemic racism. So um, when we look at this slide uh, with a little bit more layering of information, we know to be true that uh, the students who are on the left-hand side of the slide um, are often predominantly white and as we represented earlier, middle to upper class. And the students on the right-hand side of the slide are often predominantly marginalized racial and ethnic groups, and also um, certainly falling into lower socioeconomic groups. Um, and so with respect to race, there's um, often disproportionate remediation, implicit bias, and microaggressions that um, these students are having to deal with as they're engaging in systems um, that already they don't have an advantage in. So then one last slide um, to further complicate the conversation, um, we layer in this concept of diversity. And wanting to remind folks that when we're talking about the concept of equity, um, diversity really is focusing on bringing more students into what we can see is already an unequal playing field. And then in contrast, equity is about redirecting those resources or pathways to those in the greatest need who are in, um, intentionally or unintentionally running into a barrier or need additional support. And I'm gonna pause, there's a, there's a few additional points on this about kind of putting this into practice, but I'm gonna pause there because we're gonna talk about that in the next slide. So we've talked about equality, we've, identi we've defined equality, we've defined diversity, and we've defined equity. And now it's about going into being equity-minded. And to me, this is really about putting that work into practice. So equity-minded leaders, again from AACNU, and specifically the reference, Step Up and Lead for Equity. Equity-minded leaders are aware of the historical context of exclusionary practices in higher ed, and they recognize the impact of its history. They recognize the need for change, and make quality learning for the nation's underserved students a shared priority. Shared really sticks out to me here in this definition. So what can we do on a day-to-day? -day? What does this look like? When we go into our institutions of higher education in particular, what can we do to put equity-minded practices in place? Um, it is a willingness, desire, and an action to look at student outcomes in a disaggregated fashion, looking at disparities, looking at minimum at race and socioeconomic status. But the further we can disaggregate, the better we can understand our student population and understand what they're bringing in with them and how we can best serve them. We need to recognize that individual students are not responsible for the unequal outcomes that of historically marginalized populations. We need, to believe, we need to believe in being fair and allocating additional resources to students who have the greatest need. It is, um, we need to flip the switch. We know that we're here for all of our students, but that doesn't necessarily mean that all of our students need the same support. And that may require that different resources need to be put in different areas um, and specific to different subgroups and, um, based on student need. 
And we need to recognize the elimination of biases, stereotypes, and discrimination requires intentional review and deconstruction. We need to have the courage and make the time to lift up the hood and look at our structures, our policies, and practice and go back and identify where there might be areas of implicit bias or policies that aren't necessarily, even unintentionally, not supporting specific needs of some of our students. Okay, so I, I just wanna make a note um, of this, Jackie, as I'm listening to you talk and then I'm looking at the attendee list. I want to um, acknowledge the people who are on the line um, and dialed in to us today um, and make note that we know that you all know all yes. of this. So we appreciate you being here. Yeah, so we're, we're gonna now turn our uh, attention back and our lens to um, what are some effective practices of an ally, um, and then we'll tie this up. We'll talk about the uh, relationship of allyship and uh, equity-mindedness in our work. So um, I wanna give uh, a shout out to this really amazing resource, guide to allyship.com. Um, which is a growing crowdsourced um, open resource um, and guide to uh, being, being and becoming a more effective ally. And um, in particular, it is um, contributed to by um, people of color. And so I think there's really something um, that I wanna lift up in this resource because um, the, the practices that they out, have outlined for um, effective practices of allies are, are practices that people of color have said um, to Jackie and I, Yes. in this mm -hmm. case, um, these are the things that are important for you to know about being an effective ally. And we think, um, you know, just in full transparency, um, how this session was born was of an awareness and a self-awareness that um, we happen to be two white women who lead the equity council at Ashford University. And so there's something in that. Um, it means an extra layer of accountability um, and a willingness. And of these practices, one that really leaps out to me, a willingness to educate yourself and not ask those who are in an effective group to educate you. And I just wanted to kind of kick this over to you, Jackie, and ask you if there's a particular practice that really stands out to you um, that feels resonant. In terms of education? Mm -hmm. Practices of allyship. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, to me, um, in addition to educating yourself, and, I, and, and that's, you know, we're, we're educators, we're here. Um, I don't think we would work in a, an institution of higher education if we didn't believe in continuous improvement. Um, not only of the institution at large, but ourselves. So that educational um, piece is constant. We need to continue to look at that. And so I think that that to me resonates because it never, it never ends. Mm. And I would say the next piece that resonates with me is speaking up. Mm. So this can be a very scary process. And I mentioned on the previous slide about kind of having the courage to look underneath the hood. Mm. Um, and it doesn't mean that something was wrong but we have a responsibility to look at how we do our work and support our students in new ways. That in and of itself can be scary. Mm -hmm. But if we speak up and support each other to speak up, um, whether we're scared in a moment to confront a tough topic or we're scared to go through the process of becoming more equity-minded, we is, if we speak up and we can support each other, we'll get that much further along. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Jackie. Okay, so um, here we go. Now y'all are on and um, we're looking for conversation from you. Chat in, please. Uh, what do you see as the relation? Oh my gosh, I forgot our poll slide. Darn it. We can go right back. Look what I did. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Get on those computers. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Shauna. So Shauna put up, um, uh, a poll slide for us and I wanted to just um, ask you all to choose one or two of the practices that are on this slide that resonate for you personally. What, um, what is most important to you as you're um, looking at how you engage in allyship and what, um, 
what really fits for you personally. Speak up even when you feel scared. Acknowledge that the conversation is not about you, mm -hmm. although you may also feel pain. Transfer the benefits of your privilege to those who lack it. Educate yourself. Great, these are all great. Great. So um, though this poll is evolving, I'm noticing that um, I'm noticing that speak up even when you feel scared seems to be um, uh, the front runner in terms of uh, what folks are selecting um, that resonates for them um, as we think about these. And I have to say, I'm glad to see that 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 that, that others are um, reiterating that because certainly that's my um, my personal struggle. Um, there's one other that um, I want to say, just you know, from a personal perspective, that's been that resonates a lot for me is that um, notion that systems of oppression are learned, they need to be unlearned, and that mistakes are a part of that process. Um, and this is something that I think um, has been, uh, a, I don't want to say a challenge, it has been a challenge. Um, and so to be gentle with ourselves and offer grace is really important in the context of all this. Okay, so we'll take the poll down and here we are. Now we'll ask you all to chat in um, when we're thinking about these two concepts, allyship and equity mindedness. Just talk with us a little bit about where you see the intersection of those two things. Why is it important uh, to be a strong ally and to be um, equity minded in our work as educators? Lisa K. Miller, hooray Poppy and Jackie, ally, another nickname for easily identifiable member of Wolfpack. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> At least on your iPhone, you can see the um, text bubble going as people are typing. Um, uh, we're, we're not seeing any typing happening, but I trust that you all are in there. Hi, Yolanda. How are you? Yolanda's a member of the Equity Council. And we have Hi. On, on too. We're so happy you're Thank here. You. Hi. Yeah, I'm not seeing a lot of chat ins, but here they come. Okay. Remind, remind students that they must be gentle and compassionate to self before they can be compassionate to others for the long haul. Yeah, so, so true, so true. Um, what's the other quote? Um, this is totally off script, but what's the other quote about make, making new mistakes um, and, and just being okay with that? I don't know who said it, but I like it a lot. Um, Rachel says, on the simplest level, being equity-minded requires living the ally role. That's the behavior. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so thank you, Rachel. Point. Not seeing others coming in, but um, since Rachel knocked it out of the park, I think we can, uh, yep. we can move along. Keep those chats coming, though, um, and, we'll, and I'll keep looking, looking after it. So we wouldn't be an institution of higher education if we probably didn't make some mention about alignment back to our accrediting body. But this alignment is really about the elevated support and guidance that we are receiving from our accreditor WASC. And for those who are connected with these standards, the last couple of years, WASC has really evolved from um, a, 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 just a statement of diversity to really looking at what are the principles of diversity and inclusivity? And so how do we do this work? Again, going back to the behavior, um, WASC took some time to really crowdsource what the institutions and the regions were doing to kind of come up with some additional guidelines. And this has really helped the Equity Council in particular um, produce a framework for our work. Um, so with the alignment to WASC, WASC is really expecting our, our commitment to student learning. Um, it requires that institutions actively support the success of all of our students. 
So they are really looking at and expecting us to do the, those equity-minded practices, put them in place, to segregate data. Um, that should then result in strategy and student success commitments that support specific needs of specific sets of learners. Um, so given the importance of institutions valuing diversity and fostering inclusion to serve all of their students and the public, this work really connects to the work of public good under WASC. Um, the commission is noting that the, um, those principles, so in terms of um, student success, uh, thank you, Shana, um, looking at success for every learner is really um, an expectation for all institutional reviews. So I'm going to reconnect us back with the Ashford Equity Council um, and what we envision, because this directly connects back to what WASC is really uh, not only providing guidance for, for but expecting um, from us. The Ashford University Equity Council envisions a community in which equity is embedded in all areas of academic work and academic work and university life. By educating and engaging our communities in dialogue and action, the council will further the university's commitment to inclusive excellence. So a lot about today, we've talked about what this means for our students, but our work as an equity council and as a university extends to our, beyond our students and to each other. So we need to make sure that we take a comprehensive or holistic approach to being equity minded moving forward. So um, on the last slide, uh, we talked about a commitment to student success. And on this si slide, um, an another point of alignment um, or attention that WASP draws is this engagement um, with historical and contemporary issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and that they can be educational objectives that can be productively incorporated into programs at any level. And I know there are a number um, of faculty uh, on the line today, and most certainly I saw um, the Honors College um, Executive Dean Eric Klein um, in our chat. So we, um, we recognize that both from a co-curricular um, outside of the classroom uh, uh, point of engagement all the way into, um, into our programs of study, um, we need to be attending to these issues around diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and there's a note from Eric. <laughs> we appreciate that uh, chat in, Eric. Thanks so much. It's a team effort. And then, yes. And then finally, I'm going to do this last slide. Spit it forward. Sorry, the last one. I don't know why. Yeah, okay, sorry. I didn't check the form. My apologies. So, um, kind of. To wrap everything up and, and further connecting that alignment with boss, but in addition, it's really about um, seeking to understand and value the multiple multiple dimensions of diversity, um, and use that opportunity um, to strengthen our not only the impact that we have um, on the success of our students, but each other and the overall institutional effectiveness. By doing this work, it just makes us better. It makes our experience better and the students' experience. Um, Richard. Richard, absolutely. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. So um, I know that we have very limited time. Um, I want to just uh, make note that um, our hope was to have some chat in on final thoughts, and certainly we encourage all of you to do that, although I know we're right at the top of our hour. Um, I do want to um, give a shout out to Rachel, who I think um, did exactly what we had hoped we would accomplish with this session today, which is um, to draw an explicit connection between the notion of being an equity-minded educator um, and the responsibility inside <laughs> of that role uh, to living uh, an ally role um, and to being an ally for folks whose um, experiences and struggles um, may be like your own and, and may very well not be. Um, and so I think we did what we came here to do. Any final thoughts from our participants today? I don't see it, any typing. Um, I wish we could have a little typing bubble like on that iPhone. Would, that would really help. Come on, <laughs> Zoom. It's coming, it's coming. <laughs> well, if not, um, just thank you. Thank you everybody for um, 
participating and um, discussing this really important topic. AJ, from the keynotes to your presentation, I think we should strive to remove the use of average from our language so that we can embrace the many stories of our students. Truer words, AJ. And if, sorry, I have to make the connection to Dr. Karen Ivey's presentation. Yes. We brought up story twice now and further recognizing that we need to do the work to not be limited by our, limit ourselves and our, our students to one story. Mm -hmm. I just want to acknowledge, um, uh, hi Nikki, hi Michelle, I want to acknowledge Johnny's question. I was going to ask, do you have any thoughts about how to maintain this focus in the current political climate? And I will, uh, first of all, that's an entirely separate session uh, and a whole session on its oh, own, yeah, and we know that. But um, I will answer that question, Johnny, with um, one of the practices that we talked about, which is speaking up even when you're scared. So I think this is the time to keep speaking up even when our voices shake, yeah? I love that. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you all so much for joining us. And please, you know, give a round of applause to our presenters, Poppy and Jackie. Thank you so much <laughs> for this wonderful presentation. Um, we look forward to additional sessions uh, later on this afternoon, so please stay tuned.